Welcome to the Meteor Space Camp 2015 video series. These were a series of videos recorded in the mountains of Gatlinburg, Tennessee during the Meteor Space Camp 2015 event that was held in October. If you're interested in more information, please check out meteorspace.camp. Also, a big thank you to our sponsors. Our gold sponsors were Modulus. You can find them at modulus.io for all your hosting needs, uh, whether that be Meteor or Node or PHP. Uh, they can handle all that for you easily, modulus.io. And also okgrow.com. Uh, if you need to have an application built, okgrow is the place to get it done. Uh, give them give them a shout over at okgrow.com. And also Meteor Club. You can sign up and join Meteor Club at meteorjs.club. It's a weekly email. Uh, you get tips and tricks about Meteor and other relevant news. So if you're interested in that, check it out, meteorjs.club. And also Compose, our silver sponsor, compose.io. Uh, they're a great place to host your database, uh, take care of any database needs you may have, whether that's Mongo or Elasticsearch or any number of platforms that they're supporting now. Uh, I use them for all my production stuff, so I highly recommend it. Compose.io. All right, so uh, again, again, I'm Paul Dowman from OK Grow. Um, I'm really glad to be here, so I really think we're all gonna have a great time this weekend. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how DDP works and how, um, and how live, getting live updates from the database or anything else uh, get over to the browser via DDP. So I think um, I'm going to take a kind of a, like a, a, a little bit of um, a walk through some stuff that's in the docs that a lot of people I'm sure know about. I think also it's something that a lot of people haven't really seen or used because most of what you do is just pulling data from Mongo most of the time. But you can also you can also publish data that didn't come out of the database that came from any data source or that you just totally made up. And I think it's kind of a neat thing. And I just want to show how easy it is to do. So what I've done here is I've started, I, I just uh, created a new app. Uh, this is just a to-do list. Uh, Meteor create example simple to do's and I've started it up with by running Meteor debug so that starts up uh, node inspector so if you've, if you've never done that just running your app with Meteor debug instead of just Meteor gives you um, uh, it, it will print out on the console what what URL you can connect to so localhost uh, colon 8080 anyway you just paste that URL into your browser and then there you go, you're going to have something that looks a lot like the Chrome inspector that you usually use to do server, uh, to do client side um, uh, debugging and, and whatever. But this is a view into what's happening on the server. So just to speed things up, I, I put a breakpoint uh, already in here. Um, and I've got it turned off for, for a minute. And I'm going to. Uh, where is the app? Oh, it's in this tab. So I'm I'm going to. Okay, I'm I'm already signed in. So I'm I'm gonna create. Let's start that breakpoint. Let's um, turn that breakpoint on. Okay, so now. Oh yeah, and before I before I do this, I'm just gonna show you uh, where this where this uh, stuff exists in the documentation. So. In, in the Meteor docs, <coughs> if you look at publish and subscribe, you go to meteor.publish. Make that a little bit bigger. And this is what you normally do. Uh, publish functions can return a collection cursor, in which case Meteor will publish that cursor's documents to each subscribed client. So this is what we normally do with Meteor. And I'm just going to show you um, another thing you can do. If you read on a little bit further, it says, alternatively, a published function can directly control its published record set by calling the functions added, changed, and removed. So that's what I'm going to show you today. And I'm also going to show you that when you, when you publish a cursor from a Mongo uh, collection, then it, it's actually just going to be doing this added, change, remove stuff for you. So let's try that. 
Uh, let's go back to our node inspector. Let's make that a little bigger. Okay, so here you can see we're inside published cursor from the Mongo. Uh, this is inside the Mongo package. I can see that I, they, they've imp they're basically calling sub.added. Sub here will be the, the, subs the uh, subscription. They're calling added, changed, and removed. So I put a breakpoint here for added just so that we can take a look at what happens. So let's go over to the console. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can so you can see it. And I'm going to type uh, Meteor Shell. <coughs> and uh, just so that I know what to, what to insert, I'm going to do one from, from the UI first. So I'm going to say new task. Put that in here. Now, let's make that a little bigger so you can see it. So if, if I say, so I have a collection called tasks. capital T, tasks. So I go task.find.fetch. Let's see what we get. We have a task that looks like that. It's got an ID, it's got an ID and an owner. And, and anyway, the most important thing is here we've got text. So if I were to insert one of these from somewhere else, say a new tab or say uh, the Meteor Show. Um, oh, I'm in my wrong in my wrong shell here. Sorry, just bear with me for a minute. I want to be in this one. Okay. So. Might be on the right point. Oh yeah, it is. Thank you. Yeah, so let's um, let's actually just let it go through there until it's, until it's okay. All right, so now I can see it's okay. Meteor shell. All right, probably should have set some of this up a little bit more before that. So I can insert a task, um, and I'm gonna. I'm going to I'm going to say tasks.insert Actually, I'll just take the one that I already have, but I'm going to cop I'm going to need to change the the owner ID. So the owner is going to be uh, that. So this is going to be the ID of the of the owner. Okay, so now it's pausing for a minute. It's probably it stopped on the breakpoint. Actually, it's not yet. For some reason, it's really slow doing this. In a second, we should see node inspector being stopped. There it goes. So I got, I got an ID back. It's been inserted into the database, into MongoDB. But it still hasn't showed up in the UI over here, right? And that's because node is, is stopped on this breakpoint. So if I take a look at the object here, I've got uh, the ID and I've got something called something called fields. Now if I go into the uh, if I go into the console, I can type fields and it will show me what the object looks like. There's the text I entered. It says do it. That's the name of the task. Username uh, doesn't matter what's in there. Now I'm gonna so what you can see is that it's calling sub.added. And it's giving it three, three uh, parameters. Collection. So that's the name of the collection that it's going to go into. And I've, I can see that, oh, we're looking at fields. But if I, if I look at, at those things, um, anyway, that's going to be the name of the collection. It's going to say tasks. The ID is going to be an ID of the object. And fields is this thing that I'm showing you down here which is the object that, that got inserted. All right, let's let that breakpoint continue. Uh, and it's going to it's going to happen a couple times. It's going to continue. And now at this point, it appeared in the browser. 
Okay, so that's doing it the normal way. That's putting it into, into Mongo and allowing Meteor to, uh, to publish. The, the Mon this, since the Mongo cursor is being published, that ended up calling, change, or, uh, calling the added function uh, from the Mongo package. But I can do something else here. So here's my, here's my publish function in, in, the, uh, in the simple to-dos example app. Um, and you can see here it is, it return, what it returns is task.find, so a cursor. I could make a new publish function, and I can say uh, meteor.publish fake tasks. And I can say, um, actually, what, what I'll do even, even better than doing something directly in here is I'll, I will save a, a, um, I'll save a reference to, to this. Because let's go back to the docs. And I can see that it's talking about the added function. So that's actually this dot added. So when I'm inside this, well, I'm sorry, that's not very visible. Let's make that bigger. So when I'm inside this, um, this publish function, what I can do here is I can call this dot added, right? And I can, I can give it this, uh, I can give it, uh, Collection ID and fields, the same as we just saw. Okay, so rather than doing that directly in here, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually store a, um, a reference to it. I'm gonna make a global variable. Let's call it um, I don't know subscription handle equals this. Okay, so I didn't put I didn't put var at the front here, so that's gonna make it global. Oops. Okay, let's save that. Let's let Meteor restart itself. Oh, I'm going to probably have to turn off that breakpoint now just so that it doesn't get too annoying. Oh, and also, you know what? I want to add a breakpoint in my new, in my new publish function. So uh, let's just say, actually, no, let's not do that. All right, so if, if it has, there we go. Presumably it has reloaded. Yep, it's working. All right, so now I can go back into Node Inspector, and down here uh, I should have something called subscription handle. And I don't, so I'm going to reload it. Let's go back into console. Now remember, this is this is Node Inspector. This is not my browser's. Console. This is this is a console that lets me execute stuff on the server. So subscription. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Subscription handle isn't going to exist yet because nobody has subscribed to this publication. So let's go in here, and I'm going to say um, uh, meteor dot subscribe. Uh, it's called fake tasks. There. So now, if I go back. Here, I've got something called subscription handle. Good. There it exists. It's an object. So subscription handle is just a reference to the this uh, variable from inside my publish function. Remember the publish thing, it's, it's a long-lived uh, long thing inside Meteor. So at any point, you can call those added, changed, and removed on it. So I can go subscription handle dot added. And I can say uh, the collection, first argument, uh, let's go back to the docs. First argument is collection, second one is ID, and then field. So collection is going to be called tasks. <coughs> then the ID is going to be you know, anything, one, two, three. And fields is an object that is going to describe the, the task. Now, this app is expecting that object to be a certain format, so. Let's do task.find.fetch and see what, just remind ourselves what that format is supposed to look like. Uh, and it's going to have an ID. Or it's going to have, a, sorry, the ID is added, but created at owner, text, etc. So let's say um, we could probably just ignore some of those things. Let's say, actually, let's not. Let's do created at new date owner, 
And that's going to have to be my uh, user ID. So let's say that would be the same owner from this one. So that's my user ID. Owner text. So text, this is going to be this is going to be the thing that shows up. Uh, Right, that's just going to be going to be that. And the last thing we need is username. I'm not sure if that's even used anywhere, but let's do it. Okay, so I'm. This does not exist in the database anywhere. I'm just calling the added function, and that is going to cause Meteor Server to pass that down over the DDP connection to the client. So I call added. Nothing happens over here, but there it is. So that's the thing that I just called added on. It exists in the collection. Right? So now if I go task find fetch, I've got three objects. Uh, the one called do it is the one I added from the UI. The one called the new task was added from the UI. And here it is. The last one, look, the ID is just one, two, three. That's just the fake ID that I gave it. Uh, created out was just the new date. I, I gave it in the console. And the text is what I, what I gave it. So that's the one. It doesn't exist in the database at all. If I, if I reload the client, it will not be there. So this is how you, this is how you can like, do live updates of all kinds of stuff. Um, it doesn't have to be out of the database. So for the hackathon, um, Ben and Carl and another guy who's not here and I, we, we built a little thing. And this is, this is pretty much how it works. So it's called REST to DDP, REST to DDP. And it makes, um, basically what it does is it takes, a, it allows you to fetch data from a REST API, anybody's API, and uh, convert that into a live updating, sort of live, because it's actually polling the REST API, convert it into a live updating DDP subscription. And what I just showed there was calling this dot added inside the publication, that's, that's how it works. So I'll, I'll just give you a little quick demo of that as well. Um, so you're not saving any data in the database? That's right. Nothing is being saved to the database. This is all just a way of, as long as that uh, publication function is running, it'll, it can send stuff over. Um, yeah. Um, so, in actually, yeah, you know what? I, I this this might help answer that. Um, what I was what I should show is that in the in the uh, web inspector, if I go to the network tab and I go to web sockets here, there will be a web socket, and this is showing what what happens over that over that GDP <coughs> connection. So, so basically. Um, the client is receiving messages over the DDP, DDP. Remember, it's a persistent connection over WebSockets, two-way communication. And so it can receive events, receive messages over there. And some of those messages look like, well, you can ignore these, ignore these ping and pong. There's just keep alive. But there's things like, OK, ready. This says the subscription was ready. That came from the server. Be a little bit before that, we had one about um, subscribing. But the stuff that I'm showing here is these added ones. So uh, let's say added. So the, the green means you your client sending commands and then the white yeah. means server response. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. And so if if I expand this, uh, can I? I just have to make this bigger. There you can see we've got a message that came from the server. It says added. Oh, and, and actually, I, I refreshed this browser, so you won't see the one that I added manually, but let's show it. Let's add another one. So if I go, in fact, I can go changed. I can keep all that same info. That's called changed this time. So subscription handle dot changed. So the collection name, that's the collection that it'll end up being in on the, on the client side. And uh, the 
client must have already created a collection with, with that name, so it'll have to exist. Here's the ID. So because I'm calling changed, I need to give it the ID of something that already exists. And I can change one of these things. So instead of, uh, oh, sorry, I have to call added first because I refreshed the browser. So let's call added. And then if I go back to my other tab in our WebSocket connection, I should see. Uh, and I don't. It did not work. Do I have a breakpoint? Uh, oh, yeah, thanks. So I have to resubscribe. Yeah, so let's do uh, media.subscribe, fake tasks again. And now I can do that on the server. All right, so now I can go subscription handle dot added. Oh, uh, that should work. Yeah, there it is, right? So now if I look at my network tab, go to WebSockets. Now, here I see a message that says added. The collection was tasks. The ID was 123, and the fields are so you can see how that came over the WebSocket connection. If I go back here and, and let's say I make that instead of added, I make that changed. And let's change this text. Uh, I'll change the text to say this is not in the DB. And I'll go back over here. And I can see here came a message. It says the message type is changed. The collection is tasks. Same ID, of course, so that it knows which one. And then in the fields, it's going to have that, that new text. And I can see that it's up, updated here in the UI as well. So if you get so change for something that's not in, that you haven't added previously, you just ignore it? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> It'll send the message down, but maybe it's going to know, like it's not going to have that record on in its memory. Yeah. And it I assume it would ignore it. Seems like an error, but. Probably won't. It's probably something from the client. Yeah, it seems yeah. like if you've got a publication already, a subscription, that a change should be an ad if you haven't gotten it. Uh, it seems like it would make sense. Yeah, I haven't tried it, and I don't know how it would handle it, but yeah. What is the undefined response that you're getting after all those? Um, you mean in the server? Oh. It's bec yeah, yeah, it's right. because this added, it, it doesn't return anything. And we don't need to use the, we don't care about the, on the server side, where we call this code, we don't care about the return value of, of this of the added function, so I think it doesn't return anything. That's so that's, that's why. No, this is uh, this here is on this it's on the server side. So this is inside Node, right. and the the added function is uh, is undefined as a return value of function. Maybe it shouldn't even mark it, but it's that one. Yeah, yeah. The when when we call when we call this dot added. Which is which is from the D DDP package. Um, the added function that we call it takes some parameters. It has a side effect, does things, which which is sending that, making that DDP message happen. But that function there does not return. It, it returns undefined, which is fine because we're not looking to get anything back from it. We're not going to use it. So yeah, and so that ends up being logged on. Uh, in, in the console here from Node Inspector. So, so that, that shows how, how the message uh, ends up going through to the browser. It shows that it doesn't have to be something that came from the database. If it was something that came from the database, it's actually the Meteor's Mongo package is transparently doing a similar kind of thing. This added, changed, and removed, calling those on the publication for you. Um, and then, so, so I'm going to show you quickly how, what we did for, uh, for REST to DDP to make that work. So, where's that? We've got too many browsers open. Um, okay, it's in. There we go. Okay, so let's make this a little bigger. So basically what, what we did here is, is we allowed 
there's a little bit of UI here to like let you create some configuration about what your API call is going to look like. So, uh, and you can have multiple, so we give it a name. So now you define the name of the collection. That's the thing that's going to end up uh, as the, the first parameter in that call to, to add it or change or whatever. And then we also have like a REST endpoint URL. So this is something that's going to return some data. And inside that data somewhere, uh, there is going to be an array of objects. And that array of objects, what, what, what REST to DDP does is it parses that array of objects. Um, it, it stores it. And then when it pulls it again in a few minutes, it looks for the differences. So the first time we do it, every single object in that array is going to be sent down to the client using this.added, the way, the way I just showed. Then uh, it'll pull again after a period of time that we configure here. So whoops, I didn't mean to scroll on that. So five, every five seconds. And then um, the response, here's, here's the headers. It shows us live as, as we update there. Uh, this is the raw content that came out. Remember, this was a 24-hour thing. We didn't have time to format it really nicely. I think we could improve this UI a lot. And then um, there's a thing called um, JSON path. So this is an expression that says, in all of the, in, in, in this like big JSON document that came back, how do I find the thing in there that's an array? Because most APIs, REST APIs that return JSON, the, the, the array is not usually the, like a root object. It's got, uh, it could be anywhere nested down. And so in this case, there's something, so dollar is the root. Then in, in here, in this response, there's, uh, there's an object called query. So here I've got query. And inside query, there's something called results, which has a nested thing called channel, item, forecast. Forecast is an array. That's the thing we want. So this expression here with dot star says, give me all of, the, uh, all of the elements in that array. That's the thing we care about. And so what REST to DDP does is it makes that API call, pulls out that array. And the very first time it says, OK, I've got an array of stuff. These are all, this is the first time I've done it, so these are all new. So I'm going to call this dot added because it's inside a publication. Let's take a quick look at that. So it's actually a really simple thing. It's basically just one big publish command, uh, one big one publish function. So media.publish. This is where the configuration that we defined in the UI got passed in. And essentially, uh, we, we, make the, we make the call here with http.get. A little bit of er error handling. Probably not enough, and then uh, and then we do a diff. Now I, I think actually we could probably do way better with this diff thing. I think Meteor has stuff in the guts. <laughs> it probably knows all about that. Yeah. And then uh, and so after the diff, the first time through, we we just say like um, this is the first time, so all of them are new. We just iterate over it and we call. Uh, self dot added, which is the same. This this dot added on each one of those things. That's basically it. And then the the then what we do is we pull. Um, we pull every in this case five seconds, but it's configurable. Pull every five seconds, and so the next time you make that request, you do the diff, and if you see that something got changed, well then you call this dot changed. So I'm going to do a little one more demo of it, and then then we'll just have questions. So here is here's a um, here's wh here's one that I just set up using Trello. So now Trello is kind of a bad example because Trello actually has they don't have just they have more than a REST API. They actually do have a WebSocket real time API, but um, a lot of sites don't, and a lot of times you just you need to do a REST API for various reasons. But Trello was a good one to, to use their REST API to show this because I can easily create something that is in a list uh, and move it around quickly and just see the results happen right away. So um, at the bottom of our, uh, oh, and I just want to show one more thing. Because 
So here's my hard-coded URL. This, this is expected. You, you actually have to have OAuth um, authentication that, that you've already done. So you're, you, you need to have, like, you can't just use the Trello API without, like, you know, this is a private board with uh, a private list. You need to be authenticated. So there's some parameters here. We have a key and a token. This is the application key. This is the token. So, and of course, there's a list ID. So if we want to make this thing really general, we need to parameterize these. So I'll take that out and I'll go uh, dollar brackets list, and that added a, a new item here. So I'll paste the value in there. I'm going to pull the key out. Uh, dollar key. Add something here called key, and I'm going to pull out the token, and let's put that value here, and now it works again. So somebody can subscribe to this using using um, using those. Uh, uh, so here's here's generated um, uh, code that you can use in your in your app that wants to subscribe to this subscription um, as you can see that it, on the subscribe call it takes some uh, s some parameters so let's do this we can go to another app uh, we happen to have that to-do list app already running so might as well do it in there um, inside this one no that's the to-do list let's close our giant window there. Okay, so if I go to the console, if I paste all of that in, I have to change this. Yeah, because now I've got parameters for the, the list and everything. So let's pull those parameters back out. Um, because now, remember, this is like a uh, kind of a runtime thing. So the list is going to be that, the key is going to be that, and the token is going to be that. Oh, whoops, I pasted it in the wrong place. The token is that, the key is that. Okay, so this could be anybody else subscribing with their own credentials. Now, we've got a subscription handle back. Uh, if I ever wanted to stop it, I would have saved a reference to that. And now the, the next thing I can do is I can do something like, uh, see this Trello cards, that's the name of the collection. I created that collection here by saying new mongo.collection Trello cards. And that has to match what the server is going to send as, as a, that collection name parameter. So let's try it. So now Trello cards.find. Fetch. Now I have three objects. There we go. Uh, the first one is it's got a lot of stuff in it, but the one that you want to look at is name. So name is first card, um, and here it is. So it matches that. So that's the list, three objects. So in fact, let's actually put that inside an auto run. So uh, tracker dot auto run, and we're going to say console.log. This is just so that it will cha change automatically for us. And I'm going to say inside the console.log, I'm going to say uh, Trello cards.find.fetch. So I have a broken key on my keyboard. There we go. Trello cards.find.fetch. Okay, so now when this changes, that will just be printed out to the console for us automatically again. Let's go back here, and I'm going to add another card. So let's do that. Uh, we need to wait a couple seconds. Every five seconds it pulls. I'm also tethering over a very slow edge connection right now, so I hope this works. Yeah. There it is. It works. So. If I look at the last object, it should be fourth card. 
it works. And it also works when I uh, when I move these around. So if I move fourth card up to the the third position. Wait a minute, I should get a new update there. There it is. If I look at the third position, there it is, fourth card. So that's it. So just to uh, just to recap, the important thing is inside inside your um, meteor.publish, you can call this dot added instead of instead of doing a find and returning that cursor, you can simply call this dot added, this dot changed, and this dot removed. You give it a collection name, you give it an ID, and you give it the the fields. In the case of added, it'll be the whole object. In the case of changed, it'll be just whatever fields changed. Cool. Very cool. Thanks.